Hi everyone, my name is Timo Ickenroth. Welcome back to Jazz Drummer's Corner. Do you want to make jazz authentic with brushes in swing? In this video, you'll learn a classic brush pattern played by many jazz greats. Simple, elegant and essential for any drummer. Get your brushes and get in. Let's go. Nice to have you back. In this video I want to show you a simple but effective four quarter time brush pattern for the snare drum that works great at both slow and fast tempos. This pattern is not only a great exercise but can also be used directly in a jazz swing context. It's my first choice when it comes to playing a swing with brushes. The best thing about it, it sounds good but it's not difficult. Many well known jazz drummers like to use it. Do you have the brushes at the start? If not, get them quickly. In the meantime, I play the pattern for you in its entirety though that you can hear how it sounds. As is so often the case with brush patterns, the right and left hands are closely connected. To better understand this, let's first look at what each hand does on its own. Let's start with the hand that performs the taps, in other words, the hand that hits the snare drum. For me as a right hander, this is the right hand, for left handers the technique can simply be mirrored. Hold the brush loosely in the so-called French grip. This position is great because it allows good freedom of movement. The brush lies loosely on the index finger and it is also supported by the middle finger. The remaining fingers are closed but barely touch the brush. The thumb rests on the top of the brush without putting any pressure on it. It only serves as a guide. Basically, the hand performs the swing pattern. If you are not yet familiar with the swing pattern, I recommend that you watch my videos on this topic in advance. To get there, simply click on the info card above. The swing pattern sounds like this when played on the snare drum. In order for the right and left hands to fit together perfectly, the movement is key. The right hand strikes the notes in a more or less vertical movement from right to left and back. It doesn't matter whether the line is exactly straight or slightly curved. The main thing is that you stay in time. On the count one, the right hand starts approximately in the middle right of the snare drum. After the upward movement of the hand, it moves in a line to the left and strikes two. The skip note to ta follows back to the right, slightly to the right of the center of the snare drum. The three is back where the one was. Don't worry, the beat position doesn't have to be 100% identical every time. The important thing is the movement. As with the string pattern on the cymbals, the skip note should be quieter than the main beats on one, two, three and four. My tip. Control the volume by controlling the height of the stroke. Loud notes from a higher position, soft notes close to the drum. Be aware of the dynamics because they are decisive for the character, groove and sound of the pattern. Now pause the video for a moment and try it out right now and write in the comments whether it worked for you. Now let's move on to the other hand. This moves in a circular motion over the snare drum. 
Place the front part of the brush lightly on the drum without applying pressure. It's not about sweeping wildly over the snare drum. The movement must be controlled and in time. Start at beat 1 on the left edge of the snare, which corresponds roughly to the 9 o'clock position on a clock. From there, move the brush in a semicircle down to the 5 o'clock position. This is your beat 2. You then sweep the lower edge of the snare back to the 9 o'clock position, which reach on count 3. The movement is repeated continuously. Beats 1 and 3 are at the 9 o'clock position, while 2 and 4 are at the 5 o'clock position. Now it's your turn. Pause the video again at this point and practice the movements. Now that we have practiced both hands separately, it's time to bring them together. This is how the pattern sounds with both hands. If you find it difficult to start with both hands at the same time, you can start with just one hand and get into the groove. My suggestion, start with a wiping motion and add the taps later. I'll show you what I mean. To complete the pattern, we now add the height on beats 2 and 4 and a walking bass figure in the bass drum. While the stepped height is actually a must, the bass drum is more optional. Use the musical context as a guide. Is a walking bass being played? Is it in two or more free? These questions will significantly influence what you do with the bass drum or whether you play it at all. If you want to find out more about walking bass and the differences between in two and in four, watch my video why walking bass in four and in two are important for drummers. You can find the link in the description. Important when playing the bass drum, pay attention to the volume. It must never overhang the brush pattern. Play it very quietly and yes, it's hard to believe with a lot of feeling so that it subtly supports the groove. Here's the complete pattern. Have fun playing along. Here are a few final tips. Keep the brushes loose and make sure that the swinging character is maintained. Look closely at how the hands move on the stair. Visual control helps you to better understand the pattern. But above all, stay patient. Playing with brushes requires practice as the horizontal movement is unfamiliar to us drummers. We are used to hitting from top to bottom but not from left to right. But don't worry, the end result is worth it. As you can see, the pattern is easy to learn and sounds fantastic. Try it out and let me know in the comments how it worked for you. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Jazz Drummer's Corner for more tutorials. I'm happy to answer your questions. Write to me via social media or at timo at You can also find all the information in the video description. 
Thanks for watching and have fun practicing. See you soon, your Timo. Ciao.